So we'll uh, we'll start with this file, and this has been partially set up, um, but uh, most of the key components are, are not here. So we'll take a look, and we'll save a little bit of time in the setup, um, but I think we'll be able to see the, the important components. So here's the the model. Um, this there's flow from from left to right, and this is a source of uh, going to be a source of uh, of mass and it'll be swept downstream and we'll measure it down here. And the data that you saw was the measurement of the concentration as a function of time. And so we need to put in the, uh, the transport simulation. So let's do that first. So we add physics and we're gonna use uh, transport of diluted species and uh, we want to include convection and we want to include uh, dispersion in porous media so we'll check that off and i already had this set up to include darcy's law and this is how we'll simulate the flow uh, let me see we might have yes yeah, so we've got some water there um, the porous media transport properties we need to include the uh, these guys porous media well, I guess we actually have them already. Um, probably actually could get could get by with not including that. We'll set up the properties here. And let's make this a little bit larger. So the velocity is the Darcy velocity field here. And porosity, what I've done is set up some parameters up here. Um, porosity and uh, these various other properties. And so the porosity we can put in as that variable name porosity diffusion this is going to be a quantity that i call d diff the fusion constant and dispersion tensor we're going to use dispersivity and we'll have alpha l for longitudinal and alpha t for the transverse dispersivity okay um, and now we need to set up the initial conditions and that's going to be here. Uh, so the initial conditions by default is that the concentration is zero everywhere, but we're going to say that the concentration in this center point here, in the circular region, uh, the concentration there is initially equal to one. And then we also need an outflow boundary condition. The mass will go out the right boundary, so we'll put an outflow boundary condition there. And that should be all that we need. Um, so let's take a look at these studies. So this study here, I want to use this to just do the Darcy's Law. Uh, this will be the flow field. So I'll go ahead and run that. I'll give the flow field that I'll use for the transport simulation. And then we've got some other studies here, but you know what? I think I'm just going to uh, get rid of those. So I'll just delete those and we'll, we'll start fresh with some new studies. And so let's go in and put in a new transient study. And this is what we'll use to do the simulation of the transport. So we'll just assume that the Darcy's law, the fluid flow is steady and that we don't need to calculate it. We can just use the fluid flow that we've calculated uh, previously with the steady state solution. And in order for that to work, we're going to have to go and be able to access the steady state solution. So for the variable, values of variables not solved for, uh, we're going to make it the uh, stationary solution. Um, it should be fine if it's automatic. So that should be what we need there. And then I'm going to run this out to um, 100. Let's see, I'm going to run it from 0 to um, 1.2 e to the fifth seconds. And let's have 100 values. Okay, so that should be sufficient 
to run the solution. So let's try doing the computation. Okay, so here's the result. And let's see, let's make this a little bit larger. And let's also take it back in time a little bit. Maybe a little bit further. Okay, so there's the pulse that's downstream, and let's, I guess, take it back to the beginning. So we start off with a concentration occupying a circular region there, and then a thousand seconds later, it's starting to move. And there, there you can see, in this case, it's spreading out um, perpendicular to flow. A transverse, transverse dispersion is quite high. Okay, so that's the forward model. And now um, the data set is uh, some measurements that were made uh, downstream at some points uh, downstream. And we'll use those to try to estimate the parameters. So we'll need to go and get the data set. So here's the data set that we want to use for the primer estimation. Uh, it has four columns. The left column is time. Uh, the uh, B and C columns are uh, the locations. The column B is uh, X location, column C is Y location, and column D is the concentration that was measured at those locations. So if we scroll down, we can see that we've got two points here. One is at X is 0.15 and Y is 0.1. And then uh, right down here, we have another point, 0.15, and y is 0.13. Okay, so we'll use the data from those two points to estimate the parameters. So the first thing that we probably want to do here is get these data in so we could plot them. So there are a couple ways to do that. One way is to use a, a table uh, where we can uh, we add the table and I'm going to import the data file that we just saw. So it's a CSV data file and I select that data type and then I can bring it in as a table and it, it brings in all these these four columns. So what we might want to do is plot these data and let's see, let's use this probe plot. So here are the, um, I put in two point probes. They are defined here. They were already put in. And so they're right here. And they'll generate the concentrations at those two locations uh, that I just mentioned. So here are the data from the simulation. And we can plot the data from the uh, analysis or from the, uh, that we just imported. Um, by using this table graph and we'll select its table 17 is the one that we just created so we select that and x-axis is column 1 that's time and then we'll plot uh, column 4 which is concentration so there you can see these red lines are essentially overlying the um, lines from the simulation. So that's what we expect because I generated those data, that data set that we just imported, I generated it from those um, probe points. So it's not surprising that they match up, but nevertheless, it's, it's, uh, it's a good thing to check to make sure that they do line up at this point. So let's um, change the format. So the, the uh, data points here these circles are uh, are the data. They're intended to simulate experimental data, and then the lines are from the simulation. So we have we have a good match here, um, and that's that's good. It's a good starting point. It get, it tells us that our simulation seems to be working okay, um, and it the simulation is capable of matching the data. Now the test will be 
if we adjust the, if we change the parameter um, that we use to generate the data, can we use parameter estimation to find the correct parameter? Okay. Now, ordinarily, of course, we would have a data set. We wouldn't know what the parameters were, but this is a controlled test, and so we just want to be able to to verify that we have, in fact, found the correct parameter. So, to do the um, parameter estimation, I'm going to use optimization, and so I'm going to add in a, an optimization physics node. So, if we go here to physics, it's under mathematics. And so I import that, and, and that's going to allow me to create the objective function that I'll use in the optimization. So I'll use the least squares objective function up here at the top, and I'm going to use the same data file here that I, I just plotted. That's going to be what I'm, um, the data that I'm going to used to uh, estimate parameters for. So I'm gonna, I better select the regions, select the geometry. Okay, so my two subdomains are selected. And now I need to set this up to tell it the structure of the data file. So the first column is time and the next column will be a coordinate and it's the x coordinate which is the default the next column is also a coordinate and it's the y coordinate and the, the fourth column is the value and I tell it it's going to be the concentration which is uh, lowercase c in this case Okay, so that allows me to set up the objective function, and what it's doing is it's telling um, the, the telling the, the code, the, the software, the, the structure of the data file that I'm using, and it's saying that I'm going to match up the the variable c in the simulation with the data in the fourth column in my data file, and I'm going to use those. I'm going to take the difference, square it, and add that up to make the objective function that I'll try to minimize. Okay, so that's setting up the objective function. Now I can set up the um, solver to do the optimization routine. So I selected here the um, solver node, right clicked and selected optimization. And this is this the default setting here. Uh, it's the Nelder Mead optimization method, and we'll just go ahead and use that for now. And I need to select the objective function, so I go here, navigate to optimization, and it's got kind of a funny name, but this thing here is created right there. So we need to select that. And this should be checked. That looks good. And now we need to um, have a parameter that we use to, a oh, parameter that we're going to try to estimate. So, what I think I'll do at first is estimate porosity. 0.2 is the correct value. So, I'm going to make it 0.3. And I'm con going to constrain it between 0.1 and 0.5. So, this is. Fairly easy test, but we want to just start off simple. Um, the objective values will be put in a new table. We want to make sure we find those um, when we're done. And let's say let's let's see if we can get at the plot. This plot that I made here that has the uh, the, the probe table, which um, should give us the data that is generated as the simulation occurs and then this table is the points of the data that we imported so that would be nice to see as we run this and we need to set up okay we've got the we basically just use the same uh, study that we generated for the forward model 
So we shouldn't need to change the time. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit the maximum number of objective valuations because um, I, I should be able to tell in five evaluations whether this is working okay. And I'm kind of impatient here at the beginning and I just want to make sure that we're on the right track before we spend a lot of time and a lot of uh, uh, evaluation. So let's see, I think we can try that. Now it's too early. So that's encouraging because it looks like it it's, uh, goes a little bit too late, a little bit too early, and maybe it's going to then be able to, well, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we can take a look at the results with the objective table here. So here's the value of the porosity and the objective function. And you can see that it's decreasing. And uh, when we reach a value of uh, porosity of 0.2, the objective function is essentially zero. And it does that after four iterations. Okay, so we set this up um, with a, a, a scenario where we knew what the correct result was and we were able to then uh, give it an incorrect porosity and use the, uh, the uh, optimization method to find the correct porosity. Okay, so it's set up and it's working uh, correctly and that's a, that's a good start. And now we would wanna go and, and modify it from there and try more complicated uh, scenarios.